Hey guys, so now what we're going to do is get into some jQuery and what we want to do, the first task is to hide all these questions all right, so that, so that they don't show and then of course we want to make it so just the first one shows. Okay, so what we want to do is go into our quiz.js file. Now what we want to do is we want to use the document.ready function um, and what that does is it waits till until the entire page is loaded and then runs whatever we put inside of it. All right, and you, if you know any jQuery, you, you definitely know this. Uh, so in jQuery, we use the dollar sign to represent it. Uh, and then inside parentheses, we're going to say document, which is basically the entire object, the entire document object. And we're going to say dot ready. All right, now inside of this ready, we want a callback function or a self calling function. And then inside there is what we want to happen. All right, so we can just say alert one. And what this will do is when the DOM is ready or when the documents finish loading, it'll just give us an alert with the number one if it's connected, which it should be. So let's reload. Okay, so you can see that this is taking a while. Um, what I'm going to do is instead of using the CDN from jQuery.com, I'm just going to include it locally. All right, so I'm going to go to jQuery.com. And this is what I usually do anyways. I don't typically use the CDNs uh, just for online, offline reasons. Or maybe it's just my internet connection. And I'm going to click this download button and then download compressed version and just copy this. And I'm just going to create a new document in my JS folder and I'm going to call it jQuery.js and just paste in that code and save it and close it. And then back in the HTML file we're just going to include that instead of using this CDN link. Oops, jQuery. All right. All right, so you can see that that's faster. So it gives us that alert one. All right, now what we want to do is we want to. Uh, make all of these questions disappear on, pay, on the, when the page loads. Okay, so in this document ready function, um, we're going to grab it with jQuery, which is the dollar sign. And we want to grab all of those questions. Uh, if we look at the HTML, you can see that every form has a, has a class called question form. So we're going to use that. Okay, it's a class, so we want to use the dot question form, and then we want to just say dot hide. Okay, and we'll just add a comment here. Alright, so if we reload, you can see now we have no questions. Alright, so the next thing we want is we want to make sure that the first one is displayed. Now we can't just say question form dot show because then they'll all show. So we need to grab something that is uh, that makes that that form individual, and that's the ID. You can see each form has a different ID: Q1, Q2. So we want to grab the the form with the ID of Q1, and we want to display that. So back to the quiz dot js. Let's say show first question, and we'll use jQuery, and we're using the ID of Q1. Say dot show. Okay, so if we save that, reload, 
now only the first ones displaying and we can click on a answer submit and obviously the submit doesn't do anything yet we need to create some kind of click handler alright so we want to grab this button so to grab this we can use the ID of the of the question Q1 and then the submit the the uh, element with the ID of submit because you can see in our form the submit button has the ID called submit so let's grab that still inside of the ready function um, let's say jQuery and we want uh, what do we want the first question so the ID of Q1 and we want the submit button submit okay so now here we can say dot click okay click is a jQuery event whenever this elements clicked we want it to do something we want it to run a function a self calling function and in that function we want to do a few things um, we want to make sure that all the questions get hid first of all so I'm just gonna copy this line here alright and that's going to include the uh, that's going to include question one but we we need question two to now be shown okay so we can do that with the ID of Q2 and let's make it show but let's make it come in kinda elegantly we'll use the fade in function okay which basically does what show does except it brings it in uh, kinda slowly and, and just uh, really elegant so we'll use that and then for a parameter we can put in the speed in milliseconds which I'm going to use 300 alright so we're also going to have a function run here that's called process that will actually process the question and the answer to see if it's correct and all that but we're, gonna, we're not going to do that yet we're going to do that after um, so the last thing we want to do here is just return false and that's because we don't want the button to go anywhere else we just want it to do what we said which is hide all the questions and then bring out question two and then that's it okay so let's save that and if we reload we have question one if we click submit it goes to two now if we do it again it does it goes back to one so we have to create a few of these alright so I'm actually going to copy this now doing it like this isn't um, this isn't the optimal way to do this um, but it's the easiest way to explain um, later on in maybe not the next section but the one after that we're going to we're going to make this into a loop so that we can just put this code in the loop and run it instead of having these these um, five different blocks okay so if you know jQuery and JavaScript this probably doesn't look very good but I think it's the best way for a beginner to really understand what's going on alright so we have question one submit now we want question two submit so Q2 and remember we always want the one that's after it to, to come in on the submission so we want question three to come in okay and then we have three and then we have four come in then we have four then we have five come in and then we have five alright now when question five submit is clicked um, that's the last question so we don't need to fade in any question uh, we actually want to fade in the results which will be the results ID alright so that looks good let's save this and make sure we can just go through our questions okay so one two three four five alright and we don't have any results to print out yet but that's what will happen alright alright so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna set some variables um, up at the top here 
that we can use later on. Okay, so above the document ready function, let's create a variable called score, and that's going to be set equal to zero initially. Okay, I'll put in some comments here. We'll say set score to zero. We're going to have a variable called total, and that's going to be the, the total number of questions there are, which is five in our case. All right, so the next one is going to be point. So by default, we're going to set this to one. And this is basically just the points per correct answer. So if you wanted people to get two points per correct answer, you could just change this variable. All right, now the variable called highest this is going to be the highest possible score, which is going to be the total times the point. Okay, so in this case, the highest possible score to get is a five because five times one is five. Okay, if we change this to uh, 10 and two, then the highest possible score would be 20. All right, so that's it for our variables. Now we need an initializer. So let's see. Initializer function init. Now we haven't talked about this yet, but what we're going to use to save this, the, the scores and the uh, answers and all that is the, se the session storage API, uh, which is featured with HTML5. Uh, but obviously it's powered with JavaScript. So we're going to set our correct answers right here. Because we need something for, for our users' answers to compare to. All right, now to set a session item or a session variable, whatever you want to call it, is very easy. Okay, so we're going to say session, session storage dot set item. All right, now we're gonna we have a key and a value that we can put in here. All right, so the key for this is gonna be a one, and this is gonna represent answer one. So the answer to answer one is B. All right, if we look at the question, which tag should be used to represent the header? Uh, you can see that the the answer is right here. It's header, and it's B. The value is B. Okay, so whatever the answer is, is we're going to use that value. All right, so let me just copy this. All right, so a one, a two, three, four, and five. We have B, D, C. Again, this would be something that you would generate with your your. Um, question creator engine that, that you might want to build, uh, A and then B. All right, so this will set all of the right answers in our session storage. Okay, so let's save this and just to show you that what I'm saying is true, we can go to our resources tab and go to session storage. And if we look at this file, which is this page, you can see that the key, we have A1 through A5, and then we have the value. Now, this method isn't a great, a, a great one to use if, you're, uh, if you have a serious production quiz app and you have tech savvy users because they could just go in and do what I just did and see the, right, the correct answers. All right, so that's not something that you'd want to use on a production line. All right. Um, but uh, again, the purpose of this is just to, to teach you about session storage and other HTML5 features. All right, so we have our correct answer set. Now we want to make sure that this init function runs when the page is loaded. So we're going to set up a, um, an event listener. Okay, so down at the bottom, after the document.ready function, All 
right, so what we want to do here is say window dot add event listener. All right, now the first parameter is going to be the event we want to listen for, which is going to be load. Okay, and then we want the function that we want to run is going to be init. And the third one we're just going to set to false. All right, so what this will do is it'll listen for the load event. When the load event happens, it'll run init, which is going to set our, our um, answer items. All right, so that looks good so far. Um, the next step would be now that we can scroll through our questions and we can set our correct answers. The next thing would be to, would be to create a process function that will process each answer the user enters and compare it to what we have up here. So we will do that in the next video.